What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Sit Down Saturday. Today, we're going to talk about Unicron the morning after. The morning after the review, one full day after me dealing with it to kind of really sit and think about it because I do think there are a number of interesting things to talk about and sort of look back and reflect upon. I normally wouldn't do this, and I just put up an afterthoughts like uncut on the Patreon, and I normally wouldn't certainly have them go side by side. But because of the kind of historic nature of this beast, I think it's worthwhile to take a minute, reflect, wallow in it a bit, and bask in its afterglow, perhaps. It's been a journey. It's been an event. It's caused Sit Down Saturdays, Four Dummies, I think two Four Dummies, one Sit Down Saturday, if not two, plus the review. Now this, like, I just think it's worthwhile to kind of put a proper pin in it and before we move on. I, I, I think it's time to reflect. But before we can look in the old reflection, we have to do a little bit of house cleaning. Starting with last week's Sit Down Saturday, it was very refreshing to read the comments and see that many people felt the same way as I did and, and certainly felt as though I was speaking for them. That's always kind of been my mission here, so I do appreciate the kind words. Everybody was pretty much in unison. And don't get me wrong for a minute. I am a fan of competition. I like competition, but the market has to be able to support the competition. If the market can't support the competition, then what will ultimately happen is one will fail and one will succeed. And I don't mean that as a product, I mean that as a company. And we're just not in a place really across the board where we can afford to lose too many more. Then there was the little Iron Factory Samurai guy. I thought the thing was cool, man. A lot of people thought that I wouldn't like it. I, like, I, I like it a lot. Like, I think it's fun. I like, I like the stylized element of it. I found myself putting it in all sorts of poses because it's very well articulated. And the paint job is beautiful, especially for a Legends, probably in the top five conversation. Uh, certain people seem not to like it because the almost and stuff and it's kind of suggestive and yeah I get all that I totally agree um, I 100% agree with all of you in, in regards to the criticisms of the alt modes I just don't really care a whole lot about almost from my taste like we, we have to discuss it because it's part of the product but like I'll have something I would much rather something take a shortcoming in alt mode than take a shortcoming in robot mode then we had Grimlock um, look I stand by my words that it's nice, it's a nice enough toy, but it's it's not a $50 toy, and the wheelie is an accessory. He's not a figure. It should have come with a sword, even though it didn't have one in the movie. It's iconic to the character, and you're paying top dollar for it. Nothing feels special about it, which is kind of on the opposite side of the Unicron. Unicron does feel special. It does feel like it has that little bit of extra oomph in it in regard, in regard to the price point. That doesn't mean to me that it's ultimately fine tooth comb worth every penny of the price point. It just means that it feels like it has that little something extra. It feels like it has that little bit of extra quality control or, or perhaps not quality control, but passion and pride might be the right word. And I just published that Unicron this week, so I have no idea. I mean, like I'm recording this today and the video went up like an hour ago, so I have no idea. Uh, so far, the feedback has seemed to be positive in regard to the review. I know I screwed up on the arc thing that is the shuttle. Look, sometimes I'm just talking and trying, you know what I mean? Like I, it, that was a big undertaking and if that's the biggest mistake I made, then good. So let's get into Unicron, let's get into the morning after. And basically, what, let's start with a bit of a history lesson, right? So we got this announcement that the next HasLab project after the success of the barge was going to be the Unicron. And I got the barge and I love the barge. And it is a hell of a display piece. It occupies the space appropriately. It draws your eye to it. It's a conversation starter, etc., etc. There was a Cookie Monster going on at the same time that wasn't doing well. They started with this Unicron and people pretty much were split immediately, uh, which I expected, especially when the price point started rolling around. Um, the big criticism seems to be the massive plates on the sides of the legs, as well as the backpack, and then obviously the price point. And then, honestly, a matter of trust. I think that we have to acknowledge that. There was a there was a trust issue between the consumer and the producer in this regard. My buddy Jisk, who was well into Transformers at the time and was definitely considering this, kept going back and forth, and at the end of the day, he decided not to get it because he couldn't trust half Hasbro to make a product that was going to be enjoyable and on a level display wise that was gratifying enough to justify the price point. Totally valid. 100% get it. In fact, when he told me that, I had to start double thinking or second guessing rather my investment in it. But I went in on it. I went in on it because I've always been vocal about preaching with your wallet. And if something is a high price and it's going to try to justify the high price with a high quality, then you should 
support that product if it is in fact something you want. So I supported it. Not long after the Zeta thing turns into Studio One and the competition comes along and now battle lines get clearly defined and the conversation shifts in, in many ways. What's interesting about that in hindsight and the dummies talked about it in one of our, our get togethers was that for the first time a lot of 3P MP people switched sides and went for the Hasbro and a lot of official people switched sides and went for the Zeta. I would assume that this has a lot to do with price. Now, don't get me wrong, many people still definitely stayed in their corners. The Zeta, for instance, looks far more cartoon accurate. It's far cleaner. The engineering of it is far more sophisticated, for better or worse, but it is. It's also a better painted thing and uses better materials. Point blank, period. End of discussion. The Hasbro one has the presence and then doesn't do the other things poorly, but that's its strong suit, is its presence, mainly due to its size and the fact that it doesn't look bad. It doesn't. It may not look as good as the Zeta to you, but it doesn't look look bad. It's not a thing that looks bad inherently. Of course, all that's subjective, but I think we all have to agree on that. Nobody saw this thing and was like, well, that looks terrible. Sure, we had gripes and nitpicks, etc., etc., but nobody thought it was just the worst thing I'd ever seen. I can show you what that looks like. It looks a lot like this. So, the Studio Cell one comes out first. It obviously ruffles a lot of feathers with Hasbro. Hasbro's having a hard time getting this thing funded. They're trying all sorts of tricks of the trade. They extended the amount of time that you could pre-order. They, I think, strong-armed a lot of on online distributors into pre-ordering a lot of units, which is why we saw sudden spikes in order to probably save face and get this thing funded. Because if this thing didn't get funded, it would have really been the TKO for third party over official. It would have been the end of that discussion, I think, in a lot of ways. So they did what they had to do. Respectable? I don't know. Smoke and mirrors? Certainly. Understandable? For sure. But they did what they had to do to get it funded. Meanwhile, the Zeta one has to switch names to Studio One, and that ends ends up maybe being something else, but because the head was sold separately, they're able to do all this smoke and mirrors on their own part in order to be successful, but it definitely brought heat down on third party. Heat that we're still not recovered from temperature-wise across the board. The Studio Cell one came out. I reviewed it here. I wasn't impressed with the presentation of it, meaning its display quality didn't speak to me in terms of what I want for a Unicron. That being said, beautifully painted, good materials, a very clean, tune-centric sculpt, and a transformation that made me want to strangle baby puppies, which is a bit redundant. I didn't think about it before I said it, and now it's too late. I know Robert broke it, I broke the part Robert broke, and then I broke another part. It had issues, but it looked great, and the materials were good. And from then on out, I'll be honest with you, I was worried as to whether or not I made the right decision, you know? But I... I made a decision. And sometimes, actually, I think all the time, it's better to have made the wrong decision than to have made no decision at all. And in a world, or in a society, that was also struck by the Bud Ice virus, which complicated things immensely, we didn't get this thing until far later. And now it arrived, and I reviewed it, and I didn't know how I felt about it until I put it in the place that I intended for it to go. And there it sits. And now, 24 hours is some change after the whole process of getting a little familiar with it to the best that I can in order to provide the review for you to see in a timely manner as well as figure all the things out for myself and figure out how I feel about it fully we're here so let's talk about it a day later and I will tell you the most frustrating thing about the experience of this figure is definitely putting the planet mode on the stand. It sucks where you would think it would be in the instructions, which is like page one where it talks about putting the planet on the stand is not actually where they show you how to do it. That's at the end of the instruction book that is just a poor logistical layout. After that, there's some things that are kind of frustrating or like, you know, you got to make sure you got them right, but it's it's kind of it's kind of not bad. You know, I dreaded it. I think comparing it to the, the Zeta in my experience there, and like this has taught me a lesson and, and has definitely compounded something for me. Recently, obviously, the dummies have been looking into the collection critiques and many people have had varying opinions as to our critiques and all we can say is that we critique your stuff just as hard as we critique our own and it's a constant work in progress not only for you but for us. But one of the things that we've learned about is the logistics of space and really delegating an area and designating an area to fill it with the appropriate thing. I took that into account when I ordered this Unicron and I bought furniture that was supposed to display it in both modes 
have the ability to, it can't. I was an inch off, so to speak, story of my life, am I right? But I was an inch off from being able to display it in planet mode. The upside of that is that it took the option out of play. I had to display it in robot mode and I think that's the best choice for me. But I pre-planned it. I bought furniture to display it appropriately. I've heard a lot of people criticize, like, well, I don't know where to put it. And it's like, yeah, that's what we're talking about here, is planning. There's that picture that's been circulating with the $60 plastic furniture that's completely falling apart under the, the barbells and, and, and toys and everything else. And I feel for that dude, my heart goes out to him. But that's what we've been talking about here, is making sure that you're curating the space, that the space is just as important as the thing. I hope to do a versus on these two Unicrons at some point. That's kind of up to Robert. And it's no pressure on my end either way. But I kind of know already how I feel about it. And that is, as I said already in this video, Zeta is made of better materials. It's more sophisticated. It might even have more character to it. It's better than the Hasbro one in almost every way. Where the Hasbro one gets a lead is size and presence. Size for the size, obviously, but presence also for the size, but also for the spiky bits and the wings and the way it presents. Like, it just, it has a presence. You can't deny it. Even my wife saw it and was like, wow. And I can tell you, she doesn't think highly of any Hasbro figure ever. I think the Zeta one is probably overpriced. I think that this one is probably overpriced. Here's the thing. It comes down to the importance of pre-planning. It comes down to the importance of your overall display. Had I bought that studio cell, I would not be happy, even though I think it's technically better. My subjective opinion, without doing all the verses breakdown and check marks and everything, my subjective opinion is that the Zeta is a better product. I would also be super disappointed if that's the one I went with in comparison to what I got, because my collection is becoming something where the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. So the way that the Hasbro one fills that void and that picture that's behind it is getting getting out of here, by the way. But the way that the Hasbro one fills that void, so to speak, and occupies that space and becomes a centerpiece of sorts to my Transformers collection, checks a box far bigger than the Unicron by itself ever could. It pushed me in a position to be a step closer to finishing my collection in ways that I wouldn't have found fathomable. I still have the empty shelves where figures need to go. But with that thing in its spot, I am satisfied. And I haven't been this satisfied by a figure purchase in a long time. And it's ironic that it's from Hasbro. And it's a Transformer. It's just not usually what happens with me in Hasbro and Transformers. I like the idea of supporting them when they take ambitious and perhaps arguably courageous steps. And I think it's interesting to look back at all of this with the hindsight of already knowing that I'm satisfied. But someone did tell me they read in a blog somewhere that I want to end on, and that is that whatever one you went with, the old phrase here, if you like it, you win, couldn't be more true. They're both good in their own ways, and you probably bought one or the other for the same purpose. You either bought the Hasbro one for the size and the ability to comfortably flip it back and forth without fear of breaking it, or you bought the Zeta one for the materials and the way it looks. And whichever one reason you made for those two, as long as you took the display into account, you made the right choice. If I didn't want this Hasbro, I could tell you a million reasons why I made the right choice on skipping it. If I did want the Zeta, I could tell you a million right choices of why I chose it. While they're the same character, I don't know if they're quite serving the same purpose, at least in the same way, which is interesting because neither of them are scaled properly, right? For any real collection because of the size. And neither of them are small little things either. So they're kind of always just doing the same thing and yet couldn't be more different in what they actually end up accomplishing at the end of the day. And I have decided that display, I've always said it here, is my number one priority. And with him in position, I couldn't have co-signed my own statements more. This is the epitome of if you like it, you win. This is the first time that I think two products are more tools than anything else. They're tools to check a box, and it all depends on what box you want checked. And I can tell you that mine is checked very thoroughly. And ultimately, I think that this is a historic thing. It's the closest we're gonna get probably size-wise to a Unicron for me. I like all the tech details. Robert D made a good point that like, is how you view that character. Some people view him from a distance with the nice clean panels. I always view him as close up, so I like all the little sculpted line work and neither are wrong. That's what's this, that's the really the key to this. There's sometimes where like I look at stuff and I'm like, always like, look, if you like it, you win. But in my head, I'm thinking there's a good one here and a bad one here. Doesn't change the fact that if you like it you win but that's what i'm thinking this one i'm not if you want something that looks the best go zeta in a vacuum do you know what i mean on the same 
plain canvas. My suggestion to you if you're thinking about buying either Unicron is find out where you want to put them and what you want that impact to be, what you want that statement to be, and then choose accordingly. And whatever that is, that's the right answer. And here's the weird thing, regardless of which one you prefer, whatever that is, that's the one that's going to satisfy you. The logistics, because both have their issues and both have their pluses. It's one of the most interesting comparisons from you know 50 feet away that I've ever seen in my collecting career because the technical better one would have left me less satisfied and is totally due to my personal logistics and nothing to do with my subjective or your subjective opinions. Interesting. You guys be good. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.